My personal story is um, I started getting sexually abused as a young child, um, and then nobody did anything for me and to help me. Um, and to make it, God, I'm gonna shorten up a little bit, but um, I ended up with my dad in Chicago, and that's where I got trafficked at, because me and him got in an argument. I ran away, one in four, I was 15. Um, and one in four runaways end up being trafficked. No matter where you're at in the United States, that's facts. <laughs> and of course, again, no one ever got me any kind of um, help with that. And that's the most important thing in the world. <laughs> if anybody listens, always get help with it. Um, because if you don't, it's going to turn that child into a very angry person. And they're going to go and fight a lot of people. And they're going to go get in a lot of trouble. And they're going to go look for love in all the wrong places. How many years did you live that way? Um, I was in the industry for from 17 to 32. Wow. I was being trafficked. Um, in the, in so the explain what that means. Because I've had different people ask me. What do you mean she was in the sex trafficking industry? You mean prostitution? Like, what do you mean by that? Well, trafficking, okay, so there's a, there's a different, there's a couple different avenues or explanations of it. Uh -huh. But for the most part, what it means is if you're being forced, whether it's money, food, a house, a place to stay or anything like that, versus sex. I mean, that's where I was. They, I, what the gangs do is they get you together and, um, they decide who they're going to have as a prostitute and who they're going to have as dope okay. girls. And I've sold drugs too, or whatever, when I was a teenager. They were like, well, you'll make some money, so we're going to keep you as a prostitute. Um, I was doing my thing, you know, whatever. I was getting beat up almost every night. Um, but they own and control you. Oh, yeah, they own and control me. I did have a, I don't have, I can't see it today, but they branded me. Yeah, I've been branded. Um, I have, let's see, I've had one, two, for Brandon's. Um, yeah, so they brand me, and what they do is they just put their gang symbol on you okay. or their name on you. That way, when you're in the clubs or you're on the strip, and the strip is where girls sell themselves, okay. um, they'll know who you belong to. But I was trained to not care about people's feelings since I was a small child. You know, like I'm just now getting to where people can hug me. Oh yeah, oh yeah, girl. <laughs> but the pastor walked up to me one day and he was like, the Lord told me to give you this house. So we can get these women, get these women rebuilt up. I haven't been in a lot of ministered to them like nobody else. Right, right. You can reach them. And then the people that I have on my team or whatever, I've sent them through the loops, <laughs> you know. So I know that they're gonna really love on these women and they're really gonna stick with it. Because I want this house to be so spiritual healing. That when people are walking past it, did Jesus just say my name? Yeah. <laughs> um, and the house, it's cool because it's got four bedrooms in it, and I'll have two rooms for single women and two rooms for women with children. Um, and it'll offer parenting classes, it'll offer art therapy, drug rehabilitations. Um, the people with teen talent, they sit on my board. A girl won't be able to come in our program unless she's really done. And she can bullshit you, but she can't bullshit me. Right. You know, and I mean, and that's just because. Know how it goes. Yep. <laughs> yep. Yeah, yeah. So, um, but what's been your most rewarding experience that you've had so far in helping these women get out of the sex traffic industry? To what was the story that you can think of? That <laughs> I have. I'm just gonna say, I have a couple young ladies in my um, organization. I'm just really proud of them. I have been in the trenches, literally in the trenches with them. Um, and now, and they see me, they're like, because I hold a Bible study over on 7th Street, we're on the strip where all the clubs are. Um, and they'll be like, Miss Summer, what are you doing? And they're like, you're, you used to be crazy. You used to carry guns. You would, you didn't care. And like now you're like, I love you and I love Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> and they're like, what happened? Like, <laughs> um, and I was like, I was like, because he brought me my daughter home. He kept her alive. He kept my husband alive. He kept me alive. And now that I know what God looks like and His love, um, how can we not share it? Right. Like, you know. And I, I get it's hard. I'm not gonna lie to anybody. Like, I don't know nothing about ministry. <laughs> you know, I don't know nothing about running a business. I, 
but God's placed some amazing people around. Where do you find that there's gaps, you know, with like resources or, or how to really truly help them in um, this industry? Well, my, 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 my um, thought process is, um, one, the girls will go, I mean, they'll have to, the application that we got working on, it won't be no joke. They'll, you know, um, they'll have to go do 90 days in a treatment center before they come to our program. Um, they'll have to, they, they'll be drug test every single day. Um, and I really, well, I'm just going to ask them, like, what do you need? Because your need's going to be different than my need. Right. And I, I have a resource pack and I have a lot of people in the city. So usually God provides for us. We do street outreach here in Louisville. Um, and we go into the clubs and we pray with the women. But um, we also go on the strips and pray with the women. We also do ho homeless outreach because there's a lot of trafficking going on in the homeless outreach community. Um, because those girls don't have nothing, you right. know. So they're and they're going to be forced to do 99.9999, you know. What are your biggest dreams and hopes for the? You've named your organization the Women of the Well. Women of the Well. Yeah. We're um. Um, we're doing a conference. That's another outreach thing. We're doing a conference in April. Um, we're, it'll be the first survivor-led survivor conference on everything. Really? Yeah. So my prayer is that people see that survivors can do this. Because a lot of people think, because you look so one way and I look one way, you're more qualified than I am. Sure. No, that's no. not true. <laughs> you know, um, and my prayer is that People can, more survivors get raised up to where they're empowered and people around them are empowering them to where they feel like they can go out and disciple and they can go out and call me at two o'clock in the morning if a girl tells them they need some help or you know um, but my my dreams for the industry is or not the industry my bad <laughs> um, oh yeah yeah um, so I want to have a warehouse full of girls making soap and it's all natural goat milk soap, and each bar is prayed over. Um, and then I want to have, um, I have the house, it's downtown. I want to have three more houses. I want to have some ones out in the country. Because in these seven, some of these situations, you have to remove the girls from the whole state. You can't even, hit, can't keep them here because they'll get killed. So that's exciting. So your goat. So what is the name of the goat? Esther's uh, Esther, Esther Soap Company. Soap Company. Mm -hmm. People that want to find out more about that, they go to your. We're getting that. That uh, you can go to the Women of the Well page. www. w o w e l l. dot com. Okay. Um, and that'll have some of the soap on it. We're not ready to sell it off of the website yet. I'm gonna get Esther's her own, but it shows what we're doing, and then it shows a number. I'm setting it up. I'm in the early stages. Yeah, that's yeah. a neat concept that you're helping empower the women, mm -hmm. get out of the industry, do something. Well, you know, because if we ex if we ex busy. right if we if we expect these women to stop their life and everything that they're doing, and then just well, what am I supposed to do? Because you have a girl like me that I didn't really know how to do anything else, right. you know. So, I mean, all the way from opening deodorant, you know, and and to where. If you have a nice, healthy mommy showing you all that stuff, that's great. But if you don't, each girl's needs different. Um, and just like I tell my girls all the time, I'm healing with you guys. You know, I, I've only been out of the industry two years. Like, I just had a gun to my head. This is insane for me doing the things that I'm doing, but you know it's him. <laughs> because I don't even have the financial means to do the stuff that's going on right now. The way I do Women of the Well or whatever, I sit down and I tell my team, I'm like, I didn't get this, you know. Or when I was at when I was at this other situation, another program, they didn't offer any of the girls this stuff. And this is why can't we? Like, we run a pantry. Can we offer this stuff to them if they need help or if they? I'm I'm real quick to get on Facebook and be like, I got a girl that needs some clothes, and people give it to me because they know. I mean, money's great, but I don't need your. I mean, money's great, but I don't need it. God's gonna. Say here, this is what you need, or here's a you know a blouse, or here's a couch, or here's a fridge. <laughs> God's placed it on my heart to find women like yourself who are really trying to make a difference mm -hmm. and live a better life mm -hmm. and pour into other people that make them believe that it is possible to yeah. get out of that. Yeah. In talking to you, I wanted to design a piece that represented women oh. of the well, or what, you know, just you. And you mentioned red was your favorite color, and mm -hmm. red's kind of like your. Yeah, because it reminds me. It reminds me of what set me free—the blood of Jesus. That's right.
<laughs> well, I made this piece for you. It's red coral Ooh. and sterling steel. Oh, wow. And it's across. That is so pretty. And a bracelet to match. Oh. I figured you could probably wear this quite a bit. Yeah. <laughs> it's casual enough and yeah, that's so cute. earrings to match. Well, thank you. <laughs> but that will be your Women of the Well piece. That yeah. We'll have on people my could website, and we'll name it. If you want to name it Women of the Well, mm -hmm. what would you want to name it? We can do Women of the Well. Okay. Follow me. So that's the Women of the Well set. Um, cool. That represents. I love that. I love it. I love the. Do you love it? I really do. I loved making it for you. What's the best way to get a hold of you? Or to they can call me um, at 502 498 6018, or they okay. can email me at summerdickerson79. Summerdickerson79, we'll put that on there. At, at gmail.com. But, and then we got, we're always, you know, looking, because see, I tag, one thing I do take donations on is a lot of these girls are good on food because right. a lot of them get food stamps and stuff like that. Okay. What sends them back into the streets is laundry detergent diapers things they can't buy food stamps uh, they can't buy that with food, stamps. Food, with food stamps right my best friend was the night she was killed the only reason she was even working is for school supplies oh my. so her babies could go to school on the first day <laughs> like and, and a lot of people don't realize that because they're like oh she must be getting high and I'm like don't get me wrong I'm not saying that they ain't getting high but honey no not really right. <laughs> she needs like People have yeah, so many so pre, so yeah, baby wipes, laundry soap, anything like any household items and stuff like that. Um, yeah, lots of prayer. Lots of prayer. <laughs> lots of prayer. Lots of prayer. <laughs>